is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Chicken Biscuit. All right, so uh, we got the series to start. First of all, let me go back to yesterday. Okay. And one of the things that I've been kind of harping on is uh, Tatum and Brown. And while they were fantastic all year long and all that good stuff, uh, I, I, it's kind of like the Panthers, buddy. I I need a I need to see you like a long run. I need you to justify your talent. Sure. I need you. And this year you've built up the hype with the defense and everything, and now you're home and you flop in game one. And you know I'm looking at the stats. And and I'm looking at your six of eighteen Tatum, your four of thirteen Brown. One had three turnovers, the other one had seven. That's a ten. That's ten combined turnovers. You're playing against a team without Chris Middleton, and you lose at home. These are the things that I worry about with Tatum and Brown. That no matter how talented they are, I still need you to prove to me that you can be great in the moments that are the most important ones. And you know what? I think they were seduced a little in the first round against that god-awful Brooklyn Nets defense when everything <laughs> came easy. So in, in a way, their defensive challenges didn't start till the second round. They didn't have to play a team like the Heat. They didn't have to play a team like the Bucks. They didn't even have to play a team like the Sixers. I mean, we thought we knew from the get-go if the Nets were going to win, the Nets were going to outscore them, not out-defend them. So I think you're seeing all of a sudden a team like the Celtics realizing, hey, this is what NBA playoff level defense looks like, and that's what the Bucks offer. So I think I think that was an eye opener for Boston. After playing Brooklyn's god awful defense, now they're facing playoff defense. They will adjust to that. There's more force. There's but, more. But, but, contact, did, but didn't they expect size. it? But didn't they expect that? You can expect I mean, all you want, but but again, when you're sparring with someone half your size with no punching power, you're like, ah, oh, I can absorb these blows. It's not a problem. Then all of a sudden you get Giannis. Then all of a sudden you get the force of Drew Holiday. Then you get in your face, in your grill defense. It is different. Boston knows now, Big O, this is not a series that was going to be decided by home court. This was going to be decided by constant battles. If the Celtics win game two, they're fine. They are more than capable of winning a game in Milwaukee. That has the look of seven games still, I believe, written all over it. So we go from Glass Joe to Mike Tyson is what you're saying. Yeah, in the, it, uh, exactly. In the video. So from okay. powder puff to something decisively more real. No, I, I, I got you. It's just, man, I, I, it's just like one of those where, come on, guys. And, and as they say, a series never starts until the home team loses, right? Well, hell, this series started right from game one. Right, okay, and, and, so, that, and that's and that's such a bad cliche because the home team doesn't have to lose. You can just win your four home games. If the Heat doesn't lose at home against the Sixers, they win the series. So you don't want to take care of your business at home if you have to, but if you're good enough, you also have the confidence you can win on the road. Yeah, but Milwaukee now has the, the home court advantage now at this point. So Bo Boston is basically in a must-win situation in game two. Yeah, oh, I, I would think so because then you say right. even if Milwaukee just splits at home, they're up 3-1 in really good shape. So you know what? It was an eye-opener. Let's see how this plays out tomorrow in game two. By the way, the second game was just absolutely phenomenal. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I feel bad for Memphis because you knew that was their shot, Big O, right? I mean, the Warriors are the better team, even though they're the road team. That was their game. I mean, the, the Warriors had four shots on offensive rebounds at the end to get that Clay Thompson three. And then what a great design play going downhill for John Morant in the final 3.4 seconds. He got right to the cup. He got the perfect layup opportunity. Very well drawn up there. Sometimes you come up short, but man, the Warriors are looking like championship Warriors right now. They right now stand as my playoff favorite. I'll tell you what, John Morant's championship guard. Uh, oh, the yeah. way he plays, the way he feels it too. At the end of that game, you, you nothing see over, nothing overrated about that guy. I truly yeah, agree. Yeah, I love the, I love the the passion that that kid plays with. All right, the the Lowry decision. Any chance it has to do because Embiid is out? Well, I, I think it's a part of this. Oh, I don't know if it's necessarily directly tied to that, nor would Eric Spolster tell us that. But again, like I've been saying here on our Accurate Pembroke Pines report for weeks now, the entire goal is to win 16 playoff games. You've won four already. You need 12 more. You don't want to put a player at risk with a hamstring strain that it becomes a full-fledged hamstring tear. 
So yes, you do risk analysis and you say to yourself, game five against this against the Hawks, are we good enough without Kyle Lowry to win? The thought was yes, they were, they did. Game one against the Sixers without Joel Embiid. Eric Spolster sits there and goes, are we good enough without Kyle Lowry to win? He figures they are, they probably are. So you, you err on the side of caution. Again, you don't want to lose Kyle Lowry in game one or two of the Eastern Conference semifinals. You want Kyle Lowry there for the Eastern Conference finals. You want Kyle Lowry there for the NBA finals. And you know what? When you signed a 36-year-old point guard, you understood these are the decisions you're going to have to make. All right. Uh, well, no Embiid, uh, and he kills Miami. He has a field day with them. And that's why it's funny. You talk to me about must-win with the Celtics against the Bucks. I think these two games are must-win for the Heat for that reason. Yes. You don't want to give them life. You don't want to. We saw this already in 2018. The Heat played the Sixers. Joel Embiid, an orbital fracture also, missed the first couple of games. The Heat couldn't make hay in that series. That was Dwayne Wade's final playoff series, and Embiid came back with this phantom of the opera mask and took care of business against the Heat. You need to go in with a nice 2-0 buffer for Embiid time. If you do, again, you look for a split in Philadelphia. Like Atlanta, you come back, you close it out at home. If you give the 76ers life, you're going to get in trouble. That makes this more than a typical game one today. I agree. So wait a minute. You're going to give Boston a pass, but you're not going to give Miami a pass if they underestimate or take the Sixers lightly. Yes. Uh, and, and, and for this reason, it's not like the Bucks have a great player coming back in the mix. If you were to tell me that Chris Middleton is coming well, back from Milwaukee, then I'd uh, say damn well right Boston better win before Middleton comes back. But he's not playing in this series according to reports. That's the difference. This is a unique situation where maybe the best player in the NBA is coming back for the other team possibly at some point. Take care of business. You've got to lay the law down. You've been very good at home. You have to do it again. You went 3-0 against the Hawks in the first round at FTX Arena. You have to start off 2-0 this time. That's the difference because the other team has a secret weapon that's better than your secret weapon. No offense, Kyle Lowry at 36, but Joel Embiid right now is up there with Jokic and Giannis Antetokounmpo as the three best players in the NBA right now. What tweaks do you expect in the rotation without Embiid in there? You know, it's in, it, well, it's interesting. There's tweaks on both sides. Philadelphia's going to throw out anyone and everyone. They're going to throw out all their center possibilities. B.B. Paul, uh, Paul Reed's going to go out there. You're going to see the player formerly known as DeAndre Jordan. You're going to see the player formerly known as Paul Millsap. Uh, Charles Bassey, the young player, might get a chance also. But I believe what's going to happen, Big O, is this. Philly's going to go small. George Niang, three-point shooter, stocky body, not much of an athlete, not much of a defender, very well could wind up being the de facto center. And this is going to go what Orlando Alzagari often talks about. Is Bam Adebayo a player who will punish an undersized, lacking defender, or does he simply not have that in his repertoire? So if George Niang gets more minutes than anyone at center for Philly and they go small, can Bam make them pay for it? And Big O... Bam doesn't have a definitive go-to move like I wrote in the no, sunset. No, he doesn't. He's not a guy with eyes on the rim. But you know what? If you let the Sixers get away with that crap and Bam out of bio against Georges Niang settles for 14 points in the game or something, you are playing right into Doc Rivers' hands. If they're going to go small, if they're going to go switching with a bunch of Lilliputians against Bam out of bio, he has to be in the 20s or maybe even more or else he's not the player you thought he was, and he's not that maximum extension player that you made him into. Has Bam failed in that sense that he has not developed a shot that he can count on, a that's money kind of shot? He doesn't have that go-to move, number one, but maybe that's just not who he is. You know, Big O, it's like saying certain players, he should shoot three-pointers. Maybe those players just can't shoot three-pointers. He should be a better defender. Maybe those players just can't be a better defender. Again, the Heat made Bam a max player ba based on his defense. But is he an all-around, all-NBA talent in that regard? If he doesn't raise the offense, this is a scoring league. This is not the old 93-89 Right, league. he's a 90s this, player. Yeah, right, he's this a is a 115-112 league, and you need offense from everyone. So this will be a very telling series. Look. Doing it against Joel Embiid in his 7-2 with his, you know, 12-foot reach or whatever is one thing. Doing it against George Niang or Paul Millsap or a flat-footed DeAndre Jordan is another. So, yeah, I'm expecting more offensively from Bam, but maybe this is a time, Big O, we also learn it's just not there. It's just not who he is. Is he just a 
a slight upgrade over P.J. Brown? No, I, one, P.J. Brown, for as much as he switched on and did everything, Bam is a freak. Bam, it, it might be the best switching player. I don't want to say I, – I almost want to say uh, – I'm, I'm just talking about the offensive side. But I mean, they're, they're, right. they're PJ both had, great PJ defensive had, players. He's just he, maybe a little better. Yeah, P.J. PJ had that 14-foot baseline jumper. That was money, but that was it. Bam is good around the rim, has decent footwork, but just doesn't have that sort of Elijah Wan-ness to his game oh, where no. he can also uh. beat you with finesse as well as with force. But again, he's young. There's still time. P.J. Brown was an older player by then. So can Bam grow into it, whether it's working with Malik Allen right now, whether it's going to a big man camp, whether it's knocking on Hakeem's door in Houston. I still think there's a little more he can get out of his game or else he gets stuck, just like Hassan Whiteside got stuck. With yeah. his limitations. No, I know, but it's five It's five years in now already, right? It's, it's just five like, years in, but relatively young age-wise, where yeah. I still hope there can be more from his repertoire. Yeah, because if he was a pretty good offensive player on a night like tonight, like like on a night like tonight, Zoe, we're going to feed you. And Zoe would have 38 points, 14 rebounds, three blocks, and he'd wear the crap out of Well, let me ask you this, Big O. We can come back to this on, on Wednesday in our Slumma's Home Security Inside the Paint Show and our, our crosstalk before. Since you're in Vegas and you're a betting man, if I were to tell you the over-under, I'm just making up a line here, on Bam Adebayo points in game one against the 76ers was 17 and a half, would you go over under. or would you go under? Under. 15 under. points, I was going to say. Okay, so that tells you all you need to know. So I'm yeah. saying that they're throwing out two corpses and two neophytes against Bam, yeah. and you're saying he's getting under 17 and a half. Then you really answered your own question there. Yeah, and you, although you made it sound like they're going to bring out a lot of fouls uh, today. Well, Doc which... Rivers said that. Doc Rivers said, we have those. We're going to roll through bodies. We're going to try to buy time. I think the bigger question on adjustments comes on the Heat side without Kyle Lowry. I'm fully expecting Gabe Vincent to start. We saw that the last two games against the Hawks. But this will be another Victor Oladipo night. Oh, and so every ask. opportunity he gets is another chance for him to make a statement with the Heat, another chance for him to make a statement ahead of free agency. This is a big night for Victor Oladipo. The 76ers bench is, let me think of the right word, oh, terrible. <laughs> so the Heat will have an advantage there anyway with Tyler Hero coming off. Yeah. But I also think this could be another Victor Oladipo night. And Eric Spolster spoke yesterday about that, that Tyler and Vic have been working on their chemistry in practice. They realize they're going to play together more. Vic can't play with Jimmy. Their styles are too similar. But with Tyler, he can. So the hero Oladipo bench boost is far more than the Sixers can offer with Matisse Tybal and Furkan Korkmaz. So that's the difference. So the Heat have to get something out of it. Keep an eye on Victor Oladipo. Again, I'm going back to the Orlando Alzagari betting line. Orlando, Victor Oladipo. I'm going to set it at... 16 and a half points tonight, over or under? I'm going to go over, actually. Okay, so right there. There's some interesting numbers just for the thoughts on the Heat and how this series can sort of manipulate from what we originally thought from the original Joel Embiid equation. Again, getting to the cup will be easier for Nola Depot in attack mode without Embiid in there. How much is the pressure uh, built up for, for uh, poor Duncan Robinson because – Whatever limited minutes he gets, he must be exceptional in order to open up the door for more minutes now. So he's kind of back into a place where he used to be at now, and he's got to find a way to kind of dig himself out of it. We were talking about that at practice yesterday. I, I'm not sure this is a series for Dwayne Dedman. He only played two minutes in the final game against the Hawks when Atlanta went small. Uh, clearly, uh, if, if, you know the way the Sixers are going to play, there's no need for a backup lumbering type center. So I think the first reserve will be Tyler Hero. I think the second reserve will be Caleb Martin, the de facto backup center power forward. I think the third reserve will be Victor Oladipo. And then the door will be open with Kyle out for Duncan Robinson. But for as much as Eric Spolster has told us over the years in the Duncan Robinson experience, I don't care if he goes 0 for 3 or 0 for 4 or 0 for 5. He's going to make the next three. I don't, I'm not so sure, Big O, there'll be a chance to make the next three. I think right. if he goes 0 right. for 2, 0 for 3, 0 for 4, that might be his night also. A lot more pressure on him to make shots at the start. At home, it's one thing. On the road, it might be something else. But right now, I would say Duncan Robinson looks like he will be ninth man. And when Kyle Lowry comes back, that's when it gets interesting if you keep, Kyle, if you keep Gabe Vincent in your mix as well. Wow, yeah. And, and then is there anybody else that can leapfrog him? 
I, right now, I, I think he's safe right. as, as ninth <laughs> man because Kyle's out as the tenth guy. Right. Uh, then you have Udonis, uh, Haywood, Highsmith, Omar Yurtsevin, and Marquise Morris. And Marquise yeah, is safe. ill. I'm not sure he plays anyway. Marquise would be the only other guy. Again, Marquise's a guy who could play center in this series based on how Philly plays. So the door could be open. He has an upper respiratory infection. Don't know where he stands. Non-COVID. But he didn't play a single minute. Only two Heat players didn't play a single minute who were available in the first round. Udonis Haslam, Markeith Morris. So I guess Markeith could push ahead of Duncan, but there's been no sign or inclination to this point. Markeith Morris fined $25,000. Yeah, and it was interesting. I just posted a story at sunsettled.com about that. And he said he was trying to keep um, DeAndre Hunter from falling on him. And then, you know, he just was helping him up. Obviously, the video tells a little bit of a different story. Does, but... does, does, does he know that we're not stupid? Does he know this? You know like, what? Is, people, he, is people... he hanging out with Bill Clinton? I I, I didn't inhale. Like, like what? Dude? Like, people who we were born rec- yesterday, people bro. who are recidivists and have to, just to use an analogy, go in front of the parole board. You got to come with, you got to come with an argument, right, Big O? Yeah, but so there, he but came there, with an argument. There is no accountability with he this guy. He saved DeAndre Hunter's Zero. life. If he didn't grab DeAndre Hunter, DeAndre Hunter would have hit the hard metal chair like in the pro wrestling. He would have been knocked out and he would have concussed. I think what, what Markeith Morris did was a heroic act, and we should all thank him for that. Or not. All right. Now, will you be gyrating like Jimmy Butler in honor of Jimmy Butler's, was it $15,000 fine $15,000 because his hips don't lie. You know what? That's who Jimmy is. And you know what's funny? Because I asked Markeith Morris, are you going to ask someone to pay your fine for that? And he goes, I ain't worried. I think it was like his phrase was for that little bitty ass amount of money. That's the one thing. You and I can sit here and talk about $25,000 fines and $15,000 fines. But it's so relative for these guys. Right. It's like, okay, charitable contribution. I can move on. Or as right. people said when Jimmy was fine, eh, one cup of big face coffee and I'm even. Right, exactly. And he probably gets more play. Now it becomes a meme. So he's going to get way more traction out oh, of Oh, it'll, it'll become total marketing thing or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm with you there. All right, so uh, he tonight, I think the spread is eight. Over and under is 209. Miami is favored in the money line minus 350. Are we laying the eight? I'm not laying the eight. Split I, still, I, still think, the I think James Harden still can keep it competitive. He's that good. I think eight's a big number. If the number was around five, I'd move into that. I'm not saying I would take the other side either, but I think the spread moved a little too much, and they are missing Kyle Lowry, and that is a fact. And by the way, um, and I know you froze there. I hope you unfreeze here for a second. Uh, before I let you go, Harden better star tonight, right? I mean, because if he doesn't, he has, he has, well, the he, Sixer the fans thing. are going to unload. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing right now, Big O. Harden has to get his 35, but is there another 65 points available from that roster? That's the question. No, 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 no. no. I mean, but he has to be a – look, I don't expect him to win, but he has to be a star tonight. If he lays an egg on a night that they need him desperately, I agree. That I'm just saying, I'm just saying the way that town is, they're gonna they're gonna absolutely fry but his I heard ass some of all the over clubs were open in, on Sunday night in South Florida, so <laughs> it'll be interesting to see what happens. <laughs> Tootsies, baby, keep them busy, keep them busy. Follow him on Twitter at Ira Heapy. Catch his work at the South Florida Sun Center. Make sure you subscribe and support. All of our local journalists. Ira, as always, appreciate you. We'll catch you on Wednesday. Wednesday on for the a full hour. Inside the Paint Show. And back on our accurate Pembroke Pines report on Friday. Thank you, Big O. Thank you, Ira. Appreciate you. All right. That is Ira Winderman with our accurate Pembroke Pines Miami Heat report. Let's take a break. Give me a couple minutes. Back with more right here on the Big O Radio Show. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.